brothers welcome back to ages of conflict today we have a special treat for you it is the world but you may notice things are a little bit different that's right it is pangea so we have modern day borders with pangea geography so this should be a fun one here let's go ahead and get started and immediately we have some border clashes as you can see canada fighting their longtime rival of morocco about to take out morocco and they do morocco is going to be first blood on that one holy cow a lot of people are falling here looks like senegal is attacking the united states and actually making a ton of headway here the united states might actually fall oh my gosh the united states fell mauritania actually getting in there not senegal my gosh what a, what a shake up right away mauritania out of there a big country just fell over here looks like uzbek or turkmenistan was uh, conquered estonia has also been conquered by russia a lot happening here very quickly and Mauritania has fallen themselves. The Kingslayer has now fallen to Mali. Mali taking out Mauritania there. Canada really being the benefactor there, though, getting a ton of free land. As well as Mexico, who with the United States were bullying very quickly. Man, we are not even in with our first hundred years. We've already lost 30 nations. With everything kind of squanched together, it is a, a fast moving game. And speaking of year 100, let's take a little bit of a break, see where we're at right now. So statistics wise, which you should have done in the beginning of the game, it doesn't matter. This hundred years is going to be the determinant. First place is Russia. Second is Canada. Third is China. Fourth is Antarctica. Fifth is Brazil. Sixth is Mexico. Seventh is Australia. Eighth is Kazakhstan. Ninth is Greenland. And tenth is Algeria. Now when we look at alliances. Operation Finland. Very strong is Finland and Russia working together. Operation Democratic Republic of Congo is the Democratic Republic of Congo and Brazil obviously operation australia is australia and new zealand and the treaty of north korea is north korea and kazakhstan so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the next 100 years mexico could be in a little bit of trouble here guatemala coming up oh my goodness mexico able to get that piece right before they were destroyed by guatemala if guatemala re-emerges in that fight they will quickly take out mexico a very large player tons of nations are fighting right now and going and falling right now we'll just have to kind of catch up on the chaos here very quickly and see what happened oh and brazil is moving on colombia and down falls colombia a big coup for brazil brazil takes out oh my gosh brazil took out panama as well and now they're starting to work their way up through what was once central america but now is mostly just brazil okay in the year 200 russia still remains on top canada number two china has emerged as number three antarctica has fallen to four brazil at five mexico at six australia seventh South America 8th, Kazakhstan 9th, and Algeria 10th. Alliances, still Operation Finland to win this game. They still have Russia and Finland working together. The new one to pop up, though, is the Canada Pact, which is Canada and uh, Burkina Faso. Now, looking at the continents, Europe and Asia is dominated by China and Russia. North America is actually Mexico and Canada kind of divided. South America mostly belongs to Brazil. South Africa has actually made their way over here into South America as well. Africa, very, very divided. You can see our champions here is mostly Algeria. Saudi Arabia controls the Middle East and Antarctica controls kind of the rest. Fighting off here with Australia. We'll have to see how that one goes. Red alert, red alert. China was taken out by North Korea. Whoa, what a timeline we live in. China was taken out by North Korea. Mongolia really benefits from that. Kazakhstan also rather large there as Kaz or Russia is now starting to annihilate more and more people here now finding a new war to try and gain access now if they get a straight border with canada we'll have to see how these guys uh, kind of play but it could be very dangerous as ooh north korea and kazakhstan both pushing against russia right now laos making some big progress there goes myanmar up in the north russia finally able to kind of hold the line here but lost a lot of territory to north korea and kazakhstan that'll be a very dangerous alliance they have going with them madagascar taking advantage of its unique opportunity here going into the dominican republic of congo or just, excuse me the D democratic republic of congo and absolutely obliterating them they only have one pixel left down they fall sudan has also fallen to somalia so a lot of shakeups here in africa and speaking of africa afghanistan well not africa but you know what i'm talking about libya was taken out by italy of all people ironic there and uh, afghanistan was taken out by iran so a ton of changes happening here down to our 78th nation in uh the year 300 and here comes kazakhstan once again pushing up against russia russia able to get its command efficiency up is struggling against uh what was a war uh, on multiple fronts with iran fortunately for them able to kind of knock that one back north korea also struggling against russia but what might be a new kingmaker over here 
is Laos. We'll have to see how they get involved as they basically conquered all of Southeast Asia to themselves. Now, who is popping up over here? Canada and Algeria fighting a battle. They are dangerously close to Canada's capital, but they both have a lot of command efficiency here. Canada does have an alliance with, uh, who is this? Guyana. Oh, that's not going to carry you to the end there, Canada. You're going to need to find some new friends. Oh, and Algeria was conquered by France. France over here was able to land the death blow, but Chad able to come out on top of that one. Canada able to sit back and really soak up the, the, the really soak up the gold here. They've been very fortunate in that aspect. Now Russia is having to fight back the power of Ireland, who's actually running through them right now. Fortunately for Russia, they peace out before any damage can really be done. Oh, and this could be it for Antarctica. Here comes Madagascar, dangerously close to Antarctica's borders. They only have the one capital to speak of. This could be absolutely huge for Madagascar. I know it's the year 500, but we'll take a little bit of a pause here at the end of this war. But if Antarctica falls, oh no, here comes Australia. Big Australia is fighting. No, they are fighting Antarctica as well. Antarctica out of this one, Australia and Madagascar split the remaining lands. And taking a look at our leaderboard in the year 528, <laughs> we have Russia in first place, but a big shocker here, Madagascar has come up in second place, surplanting Canada who falls to third place. Fourth place is Brazil. Fifth place is Kazakhstan. Sixth place is Laos. Seventh place is Australia. Eighth is France ninth is mexico and tenth is small you know when we look at the alliances order of canada we said canada had to find some bigger friends and they did they found brazil brazil is going to add a lot of legitimacy to their claims now in second place is the russia union which is russia and sweden also joined by looks like latvia as latvia and lithuania the order of madagascar is mostly carried by madagascar but kenya is there they are currently fighting a war against somalia cuba brings up the top four which is cuba and mexico working together and in fifth place is australia operation australia which is australia new zealand papua new guinea and indonesia oh and somalia absolutely marching through holy cow here comes australia as well madagascar immediately falls after the break somalia demolishes them australia there to pick up a lot of the pieces as well France carving their way through Africa, Somalia, France, Australia really got gigantic out of nowhere right out of the break there. And France is, looks like they're going to take out Montenegro. Montenegro is taking out four countries of themselves. And in fact, they do. France is actually by far and away in first place in terms of gold with 67,000. Second place belongs to Brazil with 26,000. And speak of the devil, France and Somalia are now fighting. I don't think much will come out of this one. In fact, they do peace out rather quickly. But Brazil now having to worry about their southern borders with South Africa. We'll, we'll see how much they can hold out. And Laos taking on a very weakened Kazakhstan is pushing through them. Kazakhstan only has the one capital. And in fact, down they fall. Laos is now rather large. Ooh, but here comes a new dynamic that we weren't poten potentially ready for. Canada and Russia are now fighting. And Russia is winning this. If Russia is able to take out Canada, that would really shake up the board. But Laos is running out of people to attack other than Russia. So we'll see for how long oh and here comes mexico and cuba pushing against canada canada really having a hard time holding off all these invasions from every single side the only thing potentially slowing them down that, uh, that being mexico is their is Braz uh, canada's ally in brazil in fact they lose their capital have been pushed back to a secondary capital on the african continent it is looking very very bad for canada it would only take the french jumping in on this war to wipe out canada rather quickly and oh fortunately for canada able to secure a piece there but they are out of command efficiency and potentially a target for france and mexico out for blood is pushing against brazil brazil out of command efficiency here holy cow mexico should not have stopped that war they were about to take out a behemoth in brazil might have missed their chance to do so but they have gained a ton of land for themselves and the war we've all been waiting for, Laos versus Russia. Laos initially got the jump on that one, but just kidding. Here's another huge development. Mexico taking on Brazil and Canada at the same time. Down falls Brazil. Canada, a shadow of themselves. Looks like Mexico is going to take out both of these giants at once. And indeed they do. Mexico is a huge force to be reckoned with now. And here comes Laos on the war path once again. It looks like they have their sights set on Iran. And in fact, they do take out Iran. So they only have Indonesia. Now, are they allied? They are. So the only person that Laos is going to attack from here on out is going to be Russia, which is a lot of problems for Russia as they have a big problem on their hands with a war with France that they're actually slightly winning, but France will definitely be able to come back from this as long as they don't lose too many troops in this war. 
And here's a big upset. Cyprus on the warpath, taking out Somalia. Cyprus, one of the smallest countries, has really done some damage here and become a contender themselves. Now, it looks like that might be the extent of how far they're able to push out. Just kidding. Here they go once again. Somalia down to their last capital. Will they lose it? Yes, they do. Cyprus takes out Yemen and Somalia there in one quick battle. My goodness. And then the year 1000, our leaderboard has been shaken up with Mexico far away in first place. Russia having fallen to second. Australia is in third. Fourth place belongs to France. Fifth place belongs to Laos. Sixth place is Cyprus, another country that's come out of nowhere. When we check out the alliances, Cuba's league is by far and away in the lead with Cuba and Mexico uniting with El Salvador. Second place is Russia's union, with which is still Russia, Sweden, Latvia, and Lithuania. Third place belongs to Australia's league, which is diminished because they just took out Papua New Guinea. But they have uh, Indonesia and New Zealand, but mostly anchored by Australia. We'll have to see how this one kind of goes from here as things are really developing. France, do you have any allies? You have Switzerland. God bless. Good luck. France now feeling the pain as Mexico starts to encroach upon them. France is out of command points or they're at neutral. Mexico is at full and France, oh my goodness, is falling to the might of Mexico. Mexico is absolutely rolling through them, taking away their second and third capitals. France only has two left, and they're right next to each other, and down goes France. Mexico not quite done yet as they start to move through South Africa, taking away the South Africa's secondary capital. South Africa does have one more after this, but it is not looking good for South Africa. Mexico has pushed them back all the way to the brink. Mexico becoming a huge, huge threat on this board. Mexico has acquired a new target, and that target is Cyprus. As they begin the war path again, Cyprus is yielding land left and right. They still have a good amount of troop efficiency, so they're not giving up quite yet, but still ceding land to Mexico. It is not looking good for Cyprus. Fortunately for them, they don't have too many enemies on their borders that can fight them. It is just Mexico at this point. As they are starting to push uh, Mexico back, Cyprus actually gaining up their command efficiency, but Mexico taking out South Africa in that process we're a little bit distracted we'll see how this one goes but it does open up a new war front in australia who's united with cyprus against mexico so mexico might have wanted to keep south africa around for a little bit longer as now they have a two-front war that they have to deal with mexico once again bringing up the war pushing back cyprus ever so slightly every time cyprus slips up a little bit mexico gains more and more territory australia not strong enough to be able to hold back mexico with 126 thousand gold cyprus has twenty one thousand, and australia has twenty four thousand. ah and trouble a bruise in asia as laos is now fighting russia once again russia able to get up its command efficiency though is able to push back this line but they are so much in a gold deficit compared to laos laos has fifty three thousand. russia has eighteen thousand. so this is a battle of attrition that russia does not look equipped to win and in fact trouble is a brewing in russia now fortunately for them they have a number of backup capitals but have been pushed all the way back to moscow they might lose moscow whoa big development here cyprus out of command efficiency mexico running through them takes them out mexico becoming even larger than they already were just have australia to fight down here in the south australia is running out of time and allies i don't think they have anybody left well they do they have indonesia and uh, new zealand but uh, not looking good for australia and a couple mergers have just happened. Laos and Indonesia have merged into one, and Cuba and Mexico have merged into one giant force, which leaves both of these boys as free agents. They might team up together to fight Russia. We'll have to wait and see. And here comes Laos pushing against Moscow. Moscow is in a lot of trouble. They're about to lose that unless they're able to peace out right here, as Laos is very, very close. They are one pixel away from being able to take that. And once they lose that, it won't be the end for Russia as they have a number of backup capitals, but it is a huge blow to Russia. If they have any kind of chance of winning, they needed to win that battle, and it is not looking good for them. Ooh, and in a dangerous move, Laos and Mexico have teamed up. That will be a very hard force to stop. Australia is trying to right now. Mexico has finally run out of command efficiency, and Australia is really running through Mexico. We'll have to wait and see how long this can last as Australia is really just absolutely shaking up the leaderboard with that big push. Now, how much longer can it last? It looks like it's over, but Mexico still has a lot of gold to its name. Australia down to 14,000, but we're able to acquire a ton more land, and here they go once again, pushing against Mexico is the might of Australia. Holy cow, Mexico lost a ton of land there. Australia took first place away from Mexico in that giant push. That's how big that was. Mexico 
really felt that one it is going to be hard for them to recover and this might be the swan song for russia as they are down to their last capital with only 1200 gold to their name laos is pushing aggressively into russia now mexico is feeling the the brunt of russia's uh force but if laos is able to take out russia they are going to really push into take all that land and then potentially be in a 1v1 scenario against australia we'll have to see how mexico kind of fares out of this one mexico finally able to stabilize their borders russia down to 400 gold one capital left it's a bad spot to be if you're russia and here goes laos once again fighting russia russia has fallen laos takes it over and uh, they're gonna split the land mostly with their buddy mexico but they still have a long battle to go there looks like sweden is also out of this one so we are down to our top five which is mostly laos australia and mexico so first place being laos allied with mexico australia is in second place they still have their allies down here in new zealand and indonesia who will probably merge into them we'll have to kind of wait and see how that one goes but this is going to be one for the ages that's for sure new zealand does in fact unite into australia it is so it is down to four and the battle starts now australia getting a big push against mexico mexico has really been struggling with its command efficiency here and if they get to mexico city that will be the end of them they don't have any uh, of their capitals in the back beyond that and mexico really i was running out of time here to get their command efficiency up oh no yep mexico's out of this one so it is now australia far and away in the lead against laos now as is tradition with our last two we will go ahead and speed through the rest of this one to see how it goes but it is very much looking like it is australia's game to give you a gold comparison australia has 127,000 gold laos has 35,000. and in the year 2137 australia wipes out laos and becomes your pangea champion australia a constant underdog throughout this entire game was able to smount multiple large enemies to be able to take this one away most impressively mexico holy cow that was a fight that we had here but i guys hope you enjoyed this one if you did hey make sure to give this video a thumbs up it really helps out a lot and boys i will see you next week for more ages of conflict and a special thank you to all of my members with a special shout out to producers Thessalonica Gaming, Tokyo Yulingus 230, Dorker or Not, Serious Potato, and Tick Serpop, BB and Executive Producers, Miss Gets the Mallard, New Brex, A137 in My Element, Mason Slash Aurelius, Morwin, Rat Stuka, Robert, Sarkari Scarlet, Rob Coleman, Uther Econod, Brock Lowry, Ogan Gabriel, Demented Chickens, and Jock Rip. And last, of course, channel sponsor, Daniel Stevens. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.